I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorham, Maine. This is a Hans Wegener JH512 folding chair, an iconic chair designed in 1949. And uh, this one uh, has been around for a long time. It was bought, purchased in the 50s. It's been broken here at both these joints, both sides, been broken and repaired. Those repairs seem to be holding, but on the stretcher here, it's broken. And uh, I need to repair that. First thing I'm going to do is glue this right back where it goes. I'm going to put a little heat on it, see if I can't loosen that glue up a bit. That seems to have helped. Okay, I think that's about as uh, good as I'm going to get it. I'm going to glue it back together. I'm going to use tight bond. Okay, now, now I'm going to uh, see if I can take this entire piece off of these. Okay, I've got a nice piece of uh, white oak here. I sanded an area of it. I just wanted to be sure. It looks so much like teak. But uh, I knew from past experience that these chairs were made of oak. I just wanted to make sure.
All right, now for the uh, final shaping and sanding. Okay, all sanded. I sanded it uh, 2, 220. We gotta figure out what stain. Before I stain this, I'm gonna give it uh, the first coat of a uh, Watco finish. I don't want, I was experimenting with stains, and uh, remember that this wood, the bare wood, was never stained. But the grain is still a little dark, but when you then stain this wood, it brings out the grain too much. I'm going to seal it first to try to minimize that. So I'll keep this uh, wet for 10 or 15 minutes or so, wipe it off, and then uh, let it dry. Maybe by the end of the day I can uh, experiment with some stains. All right, well this is dried overnight and uh, it feels really nice and smooth. So let me uh, experiment with the stain a little bit. I have this stain from a local company, Camger Coating Systems. They're down in Massachusetts called Pecan, which is a really good uh, color, sort of in the oak stain family, I suppose. There's a piece of the same wood I made the new piece out of. It's been sealed also, just like the other piece. Let that sit for a minute or so. It's not bad, obviously still too light, but that's okay. When the wood was raw, it was too dark. We can try it over here. This is the raw side. It wasn't so much that it was too dark, I'm sorry, but it really brought out the grain too much. You can see how much the stain affects the grain. It affects it here too, but less. I'm going to try this other stain. It's a mohawk stain, dark golden oak. I had rejected it before when I tried it on the raw wood, but I haven't tried it on the sealed wood yet. I'm just going right over this sample that I had put the other stain on. Give me an idea. Now, I'm going to leave this on for a minute also. Okay, a minute has gone by. Kind of orangey, but maybe I can uh, work with that. So I feel like this uh, dark golden oak stain is definitely getting me in the right direction of where I want to go. Let me try a little on the actual piece. I should leave it on longer, but let's just see what it looks like. Well, obviously, too light. I'm gonna. I like where it's going, though. I'm gonna put this on and leave it on. Obviously, still too light. It's a. It's a. It's a good color, and it's definitely in the right direction. I think I'll just let this dry. And then I may just uh, use a toner or something to bring it in. You know, if I increase, if I make the stain darker, it's just going to bring out the grain uh, so much so that it won't look right either. So uh, I'm going to let this dry and then figure out what's next. I can also leave a little bit more stain on the surface.
using a dry brush. That brings it a little closer. This is dried for about uh, five hours now. Uh, these industrial oil stains dry quickly. The, um, I really like the way it looks. Obviously, it, it's still light. I'm going to take care of that. But I like the fact that the stain didn't take too much. It's important that the stain didn't go down into the grain. That's why I sealed it. Had I put that stain on bare wood, the grain would have looked like this, which is not what the rest of the chair looks like. I'm going to tone this with a little bit of uh, aerosol toner. I uh, hit it one more time, just really super light coat, and uh, I'm going to quit while I'm ahead. Boy, this looks so good, uh, I'm just calling it done. I mean, this is the toner coat. I could top coat it, but the sheen and level of finish is perfect. And I'm going to go over the whole uh, chair with feed and wax anyway. There's, uh, there's no good way to get this back in the chair. The only way to get this in here is to spread these legs with a spreader clamp. I'm going to put a clamp across here to help keep the pressure off that joint. And this has been broken previously too. Not by doing this. It's going to be a little sticky through here, I'm not sure why. So now I'll go over the entire chair with this uh, Howard's uh, Feed and Wax polish. I'll apply it using this 4 out steel wool. I'll let it sit on these black marks for a while, see if they come out. Well, there you go. It's a really nice Wegener folding chair. It's a vintage chair from, you know, one of the early ones. And uh, uh, it's got a lot of signs of uh, rough usage, but uh, the main only thing I had to do really was the stretcher was broken, and uh, I made a new one. I think it looks pretty good. I've got eight hours in this job. I used the bandsaw, the jointer, the thickness planer, the table saw, a router, and these hand tools. And if you enjoyed this video, please subscribe, hit the like button, share it, Post it on any other platforms you may use, I'd appreciate it.